you, the Zionists, who hide within Jewish cloth. You become the Goliath of our times. And you think just because you have all this money to buy politicians, what do you think? You're getting away with this? This is a crime. You are responsible. You are accountable for crimes against humanity. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. The people see oppressors. They see occupiers, they see racists, and they see people who are imitating what was actually done to them by the Nazis of the Third Reich. They have now become the new Nazis. When I get compared to a Nazi on campus in my own school, um, really, you know, makes me feel like it's happening all over again. Like, I'm being targeted because I'm a Jew. The University of California is the largest public university system in the country and ranks among the best. But for students and faculty who support Israel, life on its campuses can be difficult and at times intimidating. They are surrounded by a hostile environment in the classrooms, dormitories, on campus walkways, and at rallies and campus events. I'm proud to be part of that, that small group of people that supports Israel, but at the same time it's extremely difficult. I mean, nobody likes to be yelled at, nobody likes to, to be called names, uh, nobody likes to be, you know, bullied around or physically intimidated. I mean, nobody likes that. I certainly don't like that. It doesn't matter how polite you are, how respectful you are, but merely for disagreeing with them, you are likely to face hostility, overt hostility, um, harassment, physical harassment as well. One of the SJP kids in fatigues stopped me and pointed a machine gun at my chest. Asked me how I could live with myself watching Palestinian children get slaughtered. I come out of the lecture. I couldn't get out because the two bodyguards were standing blocking my way. And I somehow got out and uh, they walked after me to my car. And I suddenly realized that they were walking after me. I didn't know if this was real or a bad movie. And I actually started running to my car. I picked up the phone to call my mom and I had no reception, which I was terrified because I didn't know what's going on. It's frightening when you walk around MSU and they're holding up their signs, you know, um, saying that Israel is basically the next apartheid in Satan. It's horrible. Intimidation of Jewish students like this has grown on campus. Lectures and events profess to be scholarly discussions of Israel, the Middle East conflict, and human rights instead become platforms for the demonization of Jews. Students are being assaulted on a regular basis with hateful anti-Israel programs. Just by virtue of their titles, you can tell how hateful they are. The title of the event was From Auschwitz to Gaza, the Politics of Genocide. You're comparing my family members in Israel who are trying to defend themselves to the Nazis that their parents were, were murdered by, you know? We're going to be upset if you do that. You know, we're not going to just sit back and, and, and relax. You know, this is very offensive to the Jewish community. Other lectures have included Holocaust in the Holy Land, Israel the Fourth Reich, Zion Nazis, and anti-Semitism, the Zionist facade. There's just a climate of intimidation, a climate of fear that is being perpetuated on campus when you have these incidences as swastikas being put up in dorm rooms and you have people like Imam Abdul Malik Ali calling for ethnic cleansing. You have to fight against that terrorism. And the terrorists are the United States. The terrorists are the Israelis. Those are the terrorists. So now the Hezbollah are freedom fighters. They're freedom fighters. The campus is not supposed to be a place where a, an incendiary speaker can intimidate people. Now, if you had a panel discussion about the pros and cons of the defensive barrier, that would make sense on a college campus. But to have people get up and, and make speeches telling you to kill Zionists because they're occupiers is deeply inconsistent with the ideals of a campus. Under the mantle of academic freedom, the university is permitting and at times promoting events that have the effect of legitimizing arguments calling for the destruction of the state of Israel. 
Many anti-Israel conferences are sponsored by multiple departments in the university, making them official events, paid for by taxpayers' money, and promoted in the classrooms. At the University of California, Santa Cruz, one such lecture, Alternative Histories Within and Beyond Zionism, featured speakers who all expressed the view that Israel was a racist, illegitimate state. It was sponsored by eight academic departments and research groups. Faculty who raise questions about anti-Israeli activism on campus may also be subject to intimidation. I've talked with faculty. I mean, first of all, I, I can see the fear in the eyes. When I ask him how does the situation concerning Zionism and Israel on campus in your department, I see a shifting of the eye first to the left, then to the right to see if no one watches. And then comes the answer. Okay? Let me tell you, it's getting worse. Anti-Israel bias shows up in the classroom in surprising and unexpected ways. At UC Santa Cruz, for example, freshman students in an expository writing class were assigned Palestine, a graphic novel which distorted and demonized Israel. In every class I had, <laughs> Israel was shown in a, in, a, in a bad light, was shown as an aggressor, as an apartheid state, as compared to Nazis. I've avoided taking certain classes with professors that are notorious for their anti-Israel views. And it's really sad because there is material that I want to learn. Academic freedom does not mean the freedom to teach hatred. It does not mean the freedom to teach something which is objectively false. And it does not mean the freedom to espouse a specific political opinion and pretend that that espousal of opinion is fact. So that's one aspect of the 1948 ethnic cleansing that is very important to remember. That it was a clear ideological operation of ethnic cleansing, which was inevitable given the colonialist nature of Zionism. It becomes immediately clear that we're not dealing with scholarship. We're not dealing with an attempt to, to evaluate evidence. We're dealing with what is, in essence, propaganda spun to look like academic research. Um, but I'm also concerned about the perception of neutral students. I had interviewed here a Korean student who took a class in uh, history on the conflict in the Middle East. She did not know about the 1948 attack of five uh, Arab armies against the newly established state of Israel. She was just ignorant, <laughs> totally ignorant. So I'm concerned about having 120 students of that caliber okay, graduating from UCLA History Department, putting on their resumes the fact that they took a class in Mideast conflict, okay, taking a job in the State Department in commerce and industry, in banking, and um, going to the world with such a distorted view of a topic in which they took a UCLA class. Asking questions or expressing an alternate viewpoint can often result in a student being intimidated and their class standing threatened. If students ask for a more complete perspective in, on the Middle East in class, they're likely to be shamed. They're likely to be implicitly mocked and explicitly silenced. One of the main problems about feeling intimidated is because in most classes, participation is actually your grade. So I believe that if you're unable to participate, then you're unable to excel, and that pretty much keeps people from succeeding. Being worried about my comfort and safety in a classroom is limiting my options on what I can take and what I choose to take. Uh, if a professor is going to be grading me and I'm not going to be able to comfortably talk in their class, it's, it's a problem. In 2002, then California Governor Gray Davis wrote a letter to the heads of the UC system raising concerns about campus anti-Semitism and asking for a system-wide comprehensive plan. Other government officials got involved as well. Well, I'm troubled in, in two ways. Uh, first, it's the, um, the atmosphere for individual students there, uh, whether it's uh, anti-Semitic taunts or or rocks being thrown, 
just whether it's comfortable to be a Jew on the UCI campus. And I was probably more motivated by the other issue, and that is to prevent uh, anti-Semitic speech from being accepted uh, as, uh, as reasonable speech uh, here in the United States. I hope the time comes sooner rather than later when people of a free mind and a free soul can stand up and say that the Zionist Israeli occupants of the Holy Land are evil doers. Uh, we had uh, a handful of findings. The first one was in some ways the most important, although it sounds the most basic. It was the finding that anti-Semitism is a problem, even today, on a lot of college campuses around the United States. And that was an important finding because there were students who told us that they tried to report anti-Semitism and administrators were skeptical. We took this to, uh, to the administration and there's a special division to deal with student affairs and student leadership. And we took it to that division and the response we got was so unbelievably unhelpful and unfair that I, I really lost I really lost some faith in, um, in, in the way student affairs are handled uh, here at UC Berkeley. I feel like the administration just isn't interested in helping people on my side. They tell you at first that they're going to look into your complaints and they wait for you to graduate and then the case is closed because you never hear from them again. The university's stated principles of positive engagement and mutual respect Academic honesty and integrity are ignored when, in classrooms, at lectures and symposia, and at rallies and demonstrations on campus public spaces, the administration turns a blind eye to these provocations. You are colonialist, you are imperialist, you are a country that believes in apartheid, colonialism, racism and occupation. I am angry and ashamed that the U.S. government continues to back the genocidal policies of the Israeli government in Palestine in general and in Gaza in particular. Historically, demonization sets the context for violence. One reason I'm speaking out is because I am afraid that someday there's going to be a tragedy on the UCI campus women have been walking by, they're by themselves, they're walking to their car or something, and they're being followed by the MSU guys. And they're screaming all sorts of nasty things, like calling her a whore, calling her a slut. We repeatedly told um, university officials and the police that we did not feel safe. We don't want your racist war! If you're a Jew who's proud to support Israel, to be perfectly honest, it's, it's really not the safest place to be. I think there's something really wrong when Israeli students and when Jewish students go to school and report back that they're feeling intimidated, that they're feeling scared. It's a state school and it's a liberal school and it prides itself on the fact that people are supposed to feel safe and comfortable in the educational environment and that's just not the case.